Election Day 2024 is less than a week away. Some of you may have already participated in early voting, and I have no doubt that all of us are eager to know the result of this election. But have you ever stopped to consider that God already knows? He knows who will be in the White House for the next four years, and the four years after that. He knows how long this republic will endure. Our Father in Heaven also knows when He will tell His Son to go and get your bride. When we put things in perspective, the great contests that rage here and now fade in significance. But still, contemporary contests are significant for the ramifications they will have here at home and around the world. I absolutely believe that some of the catastrophes that have befallen Israel and Ukraine, as well as Christians in Afghanistan and Pakistan and India and China, would have been mitigated had America been led by a stronger leader in the White House these past four years. Clarity of vision and strength of conviction have been undeniably lacking. Which brings me to my point today. Although God already knows the outcome of this election, He has called you and me to engage with the world we live in as ambassadors of the Kingdom of Heaven. We are living in such a time as this so that we can testify to the truth that transcends mere politics and serve as salt and light in a corrupt and darkening world. If nothing else, we are called to restrain the evil agendas being pushed in every sphere. You may think your vote does not matter, or you may be so disheartened by both presidential candidates that you don't want to vote for either. I would urge you not to give in to that deception. First of all, individual votes do matter. For one thing, I've seen elections decided by one single vote. Second. Abstaining altogether allows other vo votes and other voices opposing moral policies to have an outsized impact. As Edmund Burke said, all that is necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. The failure of Christians to rise up and vote their biblical values is what got us into so much trouble as a society. Finally, even if right does not prevail, we will be held accountable for our faithfulness to stand up and speak out. Just read Ezekiel 3 if you want to know God's expectation for those He has called. While I find much to be desired in the personality, demeanor, and character of both presidential candidates, I also know that one will accelerate our society toward a secular abyss where the murder of unborn children is celebrated and gender confusion runs rampant, while the other, like the pagan king Nebuchadnezzar, in spite of his own flaws, has demonstrated a willingness to honor the word of the one and true living God. To be sure, your religious liberty and mine is on the ballot this fall. As the theme of this week's Christ in Prophecy episode urges, we cannot waver in the face of rising threats. Regardless of the outcome of this election, I will praise the Lord and eagerly await His soon return. But as long as I serve Him here, I will work to see that His will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Godspeed.